All right, so let's start things off taking a look at Microsoft Edge, the simpler of the two in terms of its overall settings. So you're going to see when we take a look at Internet Explorer, the settings are going to be a lot more robust than with what they are with Edge. So let's click here. Let's open up Edge. If you don't have Edge pinned down here, you can just type in Edge here or you can go to the start and it's going to be over here as well. So in Edge, the first thing that I want to show you is I want to show you how to identify an encrypted and secure website that uses HTTP secure versus HTTPS. And I feel like I said T three different times, but anyways, so it's either going to be HTTP and when you see the HTTP without an S on a website, that means that it is using an unsecure, unencrypted HTTP protocol. If we add the S onto it, that is by default, pretty much almost every site is now using HTTPS. That means that it's encrypted with SSL or transport layer security. So let's go ahead and let's go to Google. And what you'll notice with the Edge browser, it doesn't by default, doesn't show the prefix unless you click on it. And so now we can tell that this is HTTPS secure. And also, you'll notice that there's this little lockbox icon. If this is closed, that also means it's secure. If it's opened up here, it mean, means it's unsecure. And we can click on it to verify. And what it's going to show, it's going to show some website identification information. And it's going to tell us if it's encrypted or not. And if you want to, you can click here. Should I trust this website? You can click here for additional information as well. So let's go ahead and click there and it'll give us some information in regards to what Microsoft thinks that you should do to determine if you should trust a website or not. We can also, and if I go back to here, if we can also take a look at its digital certificate information, global sign root certificate authority, dash R2. So again, its digital certificate is valid as well. If we go to somewhere else, let's go to, let's go to Bank of America, a bank. I don't bank there, but I know a Bank of America. And you'll notice even in Bing, the default search engine, it is encrypted as well. So we click here, it's HTTPS. Let's go to Bank of America. It should be the same and it's encrypted as well. And if we click here, your connection to the server is encrypted and it has the details regarding it up here. So that's how you determine if a site is encrypted or not. And if we click here, you'll notice again, we're going to see the HTTPS as well. Okay. So with that said, let's close out of this. We don't need to have that open and let's open it back up back in its default settings to its news feed page. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the settings. So we're going to click here where you see the triple dots here, and it'll end up saying more when you hover and hold. Click there. That's going to open the sidebar menu. We're going to want to click on settings down at the bottom. And then we're going to keep scrolling all the way down to the bottom and go to view advanced settings. And just quickly, I'm going to scroll from top to bottom. These are all the features in regards to security and privacy settings in Microsoft Edge. You're going to find that when we take a look at Internet Explorer, there's going to be a lot more. It's going to be a lot more granular. And in regards to my studying, I found out that they focus primarily on Internet Explorer's Internet options rather than this. But as time changes with the exam, they may focus more so on this. I want to make sure that we cover it because of that. So we'll start with the bottom and work our way up. So you're going to notice that by default, smart screen filter is on by default, and you're definitely going to want to leave this in place. And essentially what it does is smart screen filter is an add on for their browser. That's going to help you detect phishing sites and malicious software sites. And so if smart screen filter, if it looks at its database and, and that site is is within that database as potentially being a phishing or malicious software site. It's going to let you know. It's going to give you a pop-up to let you know. So the whole goal of Smart Screen Filter is to add on that extra layer of browser security to help protect you from phishing sites and malicious software sites. You're going to see there's a very similar thing on Internet Explorer, which is called protected mode. Moving on up, we'll keep going. We don't really need to worry about these two items, but we do want to talk about cookies. So cookies, basic setting with cookies, 
let me get back out of there so I can click on this. We can block all cookies, we can block third party cookies, or we can block cookies from a specific website. Um, and with cookies, cookies are a way for a website to track your activity. So for example, if you go to, let's say you go to target.com and you start adding things into your shopping cart, cookies are gonna allow your browser to enable the website to track and to keep that information in your cart. So let's say that you close your cart, you come back 10 minutes later, your items are still in your cart. That's what cookies do. They track your activity on that website. Um, so cookies kind of get a bad rap, but they do serve a business purpose. And also if you log into a website, let's say it's a membership site that you're a member of, if you log into it, your cookies are gonna track your login session and it's gonna track your login information. But if you disable cookies, Every time you come back to the site, you got to start over from scratch. It's not going to remember your session um, if by default, if you had cookies enabled and the site had it set up, so it would keep you logged in for four hours, for example. If you didn't have cookies installed, you'd have to, every time you close the browser and open it back up, you'd have to re-log back in. So you can tweak or adjust um, your cookie settings as you like right there. If we go up some more, and we'll just stop right here at the top of the privacy and services area. We can tell Edge to offer to save our passwords. We can turn that on or off. So if you want them to give you the offer, meaning ask you if, if you'd like to save your password, you could turn it on. If you don't ever want to save your password in a browser, you could turn it off. Same thing for form entries. And then we can scroll on up a little more. Not everything in here pertains to what we need to know, so I'm not covering everything. And then we'll take a look at pop-ups and Adobe Flash. So again, Adobe Flash is known, it's notorious for having vulnerabilities over time. So that's why if you use Adobe Flash, you're constantly, um, and I'm not, when I say constantly, it's not every day, but maybe once a month, they're constantly doing updates to patch vulnerabilities. And so you can tell the browser by default if you want to or don't want to use Adobe Flash. And same things if you want to turn your pop-up blocker on or off. You notice that there's no settings in here, no detailed settings where we can go in and tell them what websites to exempt from this or what websites to block all pop-ups or what websites to use Adobe Flash or not. It's very basic. So that is the Edge browser. Again, everything is going to be the, in the advanced area, the advanced settings, and let's close out of here. So if we click here to get the sidebar menu, we scroll down to settings, and we scroll all the way down to, and if I can get it to open, it didn't open. If we scroll all the way down to view advanced settings, this is where everything is. So that's going to conclude our demonstration of Microsoft Edge browser. I recommend that you play around and you do this yourself. Um, just understand the basics, understand what you can and cannot do, and you should be okay for the exam. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.